In the previous video, I have demonstrated creating and launching a web server and going live instantly. Now this web server, the application that we're running on it requires a database that is MySQL. So we're gonna use a managed service from AWS and that's exactly what I'm gonna demonstrate here. How do you create a database in a completely managed environment with AWS? So I've selected RDS here and then I'm gonna pick my database engine out of these six, that is MySQL choose the category and the instance size based on what I'm what I require I'm gonna pick free tier which creates a single instance not high available but it serves my purpose and it I'm able to demonstrate here uh, how do you use a managed service that is so I would have to pick the master password uh, confirm it and then I could pick few other configuration that I want but this gives me very little customization I can also choose another option where I could possibly add more configuration using standard options. Instead of quick start, I have selected standard option because that suits me better. I need to control my environment and I'm gonna provide few other configuration. Configurations rather. Uh, and one of the important configuration that I wanna make is provide the name of the database. I can also scroll through everything. So as you see here, it is going to get created inside a VPC. So it is secure by default. It is not publicly accessible by default that is. So only thing that needs to access this database is my web server. So I'm gonna access or I, I have already set up the rules in my VPC security group where I have allowed access to the web server. And this is what I want. So initial database name, because when I want to connect from my web server, from my WordPress server to this database, I want this database to be present already. And I've selected whatever options that I need. And then I'm gonna just click on create database here. Review these options once more. So it's a MySQL latest instance I have provided the credentials, I have uh, provided the database name. There are a lot of defaults which have already been picked up by RDS, which I'm okay with most of those, including the maintenance and backup period and so on. And I just click on create database here. Now, creating a database is going to take some time. So maybe you wanna go grab some coffee, uh, you know, go around, come back maybe after 10 minutes and you should find your database being available. And that's what I've done. So I've skipped forward uh, after the database is available and this is what you see. And the best part about this is we don't have to worry about, oh, how do I install this database? It's already been created. It has already been managed or being managed by AWS Cloud. So the management is completely up to the cloud server or the cloud platform that is. And I have added the security group so that I allow access to my web server by the name of the firewall or the security group itself. Again, we are not getting in depth into AWS features. So uh, I'm not gonna explain everything here, but rather I'm just showing you bits and pieces about how the managed service works really. And as you see here, you can browse from here, you get the monitoring right out of the box. This is great because setting up monitoring is another process, another tool that you would have to add to your web server. You are getting logs and events from here. Uh, you can update and view the configurations from here. You can change it later. So without disturbing the data or without losing data, you can upgrade the server to a higher capacity later as well. And the best part is here, the maintenance and backups. So AWS is going to do the maintenance on behalf of you uh, at a particular interval. You can choose that interval as well. So it will automatically upgrade, patch your server. And there is a snapshot or the, you know, that's backups are being taken automatically. There is a data worth seven days backed up all the time so that you can revert or to a state up to seven days in past, anytime. 
and then there are daily snapshots automated backups and so on and so forth so this is a completely managed service and this is one example of aws's managed service and the list of services that i shown have shown you earlier are similar to this basically for a particular application you have a managed service doing something and now that i have the database set up all i have to do is provide the details here from the wordpress configuration page the name of the database the database host the username and the password once i fill it in i am all set so i just have to it knows that it connects to the database it already has the connection verified and all i have to do now is run the installation which sets up rest of my wordpress application and i could just provide a name here for my blog or for my site provide a username and password that i could use for administering wordpress as an application and there i go so i'm just gonna fill in rest of the details and click on install wordpress and i should have my site live and available and we could actually do that within let's say less than 30 minutes and that's just amazing you can go live uh, go global with cloud and that's the advantage of using cloud and then another useful thing that we have done is using a managed service so we don't have to worry about managing the database monitoring for it all we have to do is set up the infrastructure forget about the database management and focus on the most important thing that is creating publishing the site here the data the content and uh, maintaining it maintaining the quality of that basically right so infrastructure is something that you can forget about building provisioning and administering it most of that is done by a cloud platform such as aws and that i would say is the beauty of cloud